Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and this is performance continued. Um, now there's been a couple of new tips and tricks and things that have come down the line. A couple of people have had a few questions that um, I'm going to clarify again or touch on again. Um, some have had a couple of statements that um, you know that made me feel that maybe I didn't touch things as well as I should have. Um, I do want to touch on that for just a second guys. Um, I'm an avid believer that you know positivity and negativity affect everybody in their lives. Um, so just an FYI, if you leave blatantly negative comments on my channel, okay, I'm going to remove them. I just want you guys to have that heads up. And whether you be talking to me or someone else, if I see them, I'm going to remove them. Um, now, as the channel grows, and population grows, obviously, I'm not going to catch every single one. But the ones that I do see, I'm going to remove. Um, I don't have a problem with people telling me, hey, you know, you might want to touch on this a little bit further, but when you blatantly either tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about or tell me that I'm a moron or whatever it is or an idiot, you know, I'm human. I'm not going to pretend like that doesn't have an impact. Nobody wants to hear that kind of crap. Um, so just FYI, if that's the type of person you are, A, you've just deemed yourself a YouTube troll, okay? There, there's plenty of things that you can say other than saying crap like that to anybody. Um, it doesn't matter who it is. And I guess the reason why I'm taking such a hard stance on this, especially right now, is this is a flight sim community. You know, this is a thing that we all do to um, to, to get away, to, to have a chance to enjoy ourselves, to relax, whatever it may be. Um, and I don't know everything. I know a lot. I know I know a lot. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. And... Um, you know, I'm just trying to share the information that I have found that's helpful for me. I'm trying to share information that other people have found to spread it as quickly as possible so people can get the best experience that they can with their time. We're all stuck at home right now in many places and doing the best we can to get by. Um, and it just, I guess my issue is, guys, just not to preach for a minute, but, you know, there's so much hate going on right now around us. And I'm not typically one who dives into this kind of thing or, or really draws it out or... or or focuses on it but it's hard not to now like it's everywhere it, it, it's you know there's so much anger and so much hate and so much negativity on the news on social media walking down the street for crying out loud it doesn't matter where you go um i don't feel like it needs to be it doesn't need to be here guys remember that we're all people okay and just because you can say whatever you want online without having to face that person's emotions or or, or you know facial reaction doesn't mean you should you know there's no need to be nasty so anyway i just want to give you guys that heads up if you're that type of person i'm just going to remove your comment i'm not going to the second i see the negativity i'm going to remove it okay now that's not to say there's no negative criticism it's like for example just a couple what was it a week ago i think you know when i did that cessna 182 review there's a few of you who will probably remember it i initially posted posted the review with a night flight and there were two people right off the bat were like, dude, like, no, you know, don't do a review at night. Like, you know, we want to be able to see the plane. So what did I do? I recreated the video in the daytime and removed the other one. I don't have a problem with criticism, guys. I, I welcome it. Um, but there's a difference between criticism and being an ass. And if you're going to be an ass, I'm just, just letting you know, you know. Anyway, moving on. Um, hopefully we all take something from that because, like I said, there's enough negativity in the world. All right, so now getting on to some settings. So let's go ahead and go into our general here. <clears throat> now I want to emphasize what I've emphasized in every video I think that I've done with this is this is a methodology. I want you guys to find the settings that are best for you. Do not copy my settings. Don't copy your neighbor's settings. Don't copy your buddy's settings. Copy your settings. Find what's best for you. This is an expensive simulator. You're going to invest a lot of time in it. You're going to invest probably a, some, a lot of money into it as time goes on. Um, you're going to invest a lot of time in research and, and, and learning how everything works and, and making these flights fun for yourself. If you're going to do all that, then invest the time to get the best performance for your machine, okay? Because everybody's going to be different. But with that being said, let's talk about a couple of the questions that have come down right off the bat. First off, V-Sync. Um, people are asking, should I cap my frames per second? This is going to be one of those ones where I've seen mixed results. So I leave V-Sync off and I've not had any problem. However, I saw one gentleman report that it caused massive overheating. Um, anyway. So it's going to cause, uh, or he had it cause uh, massive overheating, which is very odd. I, I can't even think about what would cause that. Um, so my answer to that is going to be test it. But the other thing that I'm going to be asking you is why. 
um, why are you worried about uh, limiting your frame rates? Now, limiting your frame rates can do some benefits. A, it's going to keep your GPU from trying to push as hard as it can if it's got overhead. But for example, if you're just trying to hit that 60 frames per second, limit it to 60 frames per second. Um, I have a 2080 Ti. I have a decent CPU. She's starting to show her age a little bit. She's an older CPU now. Um, but 32 gigs of RAM, DDR4 at 3200, blah, 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 blah. Um, but um, the big thing is is that i i can't hit 60 frames per second like i just can't um at least on, the, on my current settings i suppose i could if i crank them down but again that's the other thing i want to talk about <clears throat> is you don't need to hit 60 frames per second in a flight simulator i know everyone's still you know even after my last video they're still talking about 60 frames 60 frames 60 frames guys stop shooting for 60 frames per second this is not a first person shooter it is not a racing game it is not an aerial combat game it is a simulator or, or just a, a, a you know real world simulation um you don't need the 60 frames per second you really don't 30 frames per second in a simulator like this and you're golden you know as long as you're not getting the stuttering and it's comfortable and you really can't tell that things you know aren't great then you're fine so don't dive into the frames per second too much people are still focusing on that so heavily um, you get below 30 frames per second, yeah, you're going to start having issues, okay? Then it's going to start being noticeable. But stop making 60 the target and start making smooth the target. Start start making enjoyable the target, okay? Because if you're just trying to go for, shoot for that 60, man, you're going to you're gonna be missing out on a lot of visual quality because you're so focused on that 60 frames per second. Stop focusing on the 60 frames per second, Okay. Okay, now with that being said, there's three major sliders also that will uh, be a major impact to you. First off, render scaling. This is going to uh, scale the resolution of the 3D scene rendering. So every, absolutely, literally everything that you're looking at, whether it be terrain, the cockpit, everything, it's going to determine how fine the edges are um, and how smooth everything looks. But I can tell you right now that you can kick this thing down to about 80 and notice minor difference, just minor. Uh, like after 10 minutes of flying, you won't even notice it anymore. Um, you'll notice it if you're hyper focused on it, you're really staring at it, and obviously you're going to be because you're making the change. But set it and then fly it for a little bit. And that's the other thing with this testing, guys, that you need to do is you need to make sure don't fly it for 10 seconds, say, nope, I don't like that. Fly around for a little bit because when you first make those setting changes, you're going to be hyper focused on that. You're not going to be hyper focused on that, you know, a day from now when you're flying up and you just come home from work, whatever, you, you fire up your sim and, and off you go. You may even forget that you made the changes, okay? So again, find smooth, don't find 60, find smooth, okay? Um, terrain level of detail, again, I've told you guys before in the previous videos, um, terrain, the environment in general, is the hardest thing for your graphics card and your CPU to render and put together. It is not the plane, typically, 99% of the time that's accurate. Um, and if it is the aircraft, typically it's an optimization issue, not so much that it's difficult for a CPU or GPU to do. And then again, the object level of detail. So this is going to be your terrain, your environment. This is everything on top of it. All right. But um, so start with those three, but definitely set everything down to low and then work your way up, guys. And you, and it's and don't just pick one spot. You know, when I was doing my testing, I went from Tucson to Phoenix to Los Angeles and then finally ended up in New York. But I also jumped around here and there to Seattle up in the upper mountainous areas. I went over to Alaska, um, you know, went down to Honolulu, you know, and just sort of tested everything out based on where I was in the world so I could find that that comfortable balance no matter where I was all right some areas did better than others but and some areas for example in Tucson I can push the graphics up pretty high because we're a decent sized city but we're certainly not like Phoenix or Los Angeles we are much smaller um, so you know I had to sacrifice some performance in Tucson because Tucson offered me that I could crank a few of these up a little bit higher. But then when I go over to Phoenix, and like I said, those big metropolitan areas, I take a hit and I'd have to go into the graphic settings and change it. I didn't want to be doing that back and forth. So you have to find a balance, okay? Start with somewhere, and I wouldn't even necessarily, necessarily stay start with the um, highest populated city you can think of. You know, ask yourself, again, this goes back to what's your flying style? How often are you going to be in an area like that? If you're going to be in an area like that a lot, then yeah, you might want to start there. If it's something that you may fly to every now and then, well, then the settings that optimize that area may not be as important to you. Uh, next thing, uh, generic plane models. I've had, I've read mixed, mixed thoughts on these. Um, I leave mine off. Again, minimal impact for me. 
excuse me, uh, minimal impact for me, minimal FPS gain or loss, depending on either direction. However, um, another one is, oops, traffic. The real-time online uh, air traffic, I have seen multiple people post that with this on, you take a pretty significant frame hit. Um, so that may be something to test as well. Data caching. Um, rolling cache settings essentially what it'll do is use hard drive space to cache the image in front of where you currently are. That way it's already preloaded by the time you get there. Um, you can set this, you can turn it to on and set it to where you'd like. Pick the directory you want this caching to go. I don't recommend the default directory unless you have a ton of space on your C drive. If you have an external drive or something like that, that you can put it on, I would put it there. Um, and then your limit to how much how much detail do you want it to go? Don't go nuts with this, guys. And by the way, this process can take anywhere from 10 to a half an hour, depending on the size you pick. So keep that in mind, 10 minutes to a half an hour. Um, I would keep it low if you're gonna use this, you know, maybe five, six gigs tops. Um, I wouldn't go too crazy above that. Um, again, A, it's important to remember this will reserve that space on your hard drive. So whatever limit you set here, you have lost that space on your hard drive, okay? You need to consider it use space. Okay, um, but uh, that's, I haven't, I've tried it with both. I didn't notice any performance change. But again, I'm not really struggling. You know, I'm, I'm still getting anywhere from the low 40s up into the high 50s, depending on where I'm at. Okay, so something to think about. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at something else here. Now, again, current data consumption, this is letting you know how many gigs of data that it's currently using. So what I could do here, and I think if we turn this off, that will adjust. Yep, updating the rolling cache. Oh, I turned it off. Okay, cool, good. I didn't want you to do that anyway. All right, so it doesn't look like that changed anything. Um, for some reason, I thought that would affect that. I don't know what the current data consumption is actually. See how much data is being used by Flight Simulator. Oh, on a monthly basis. Oh, duh. All right, so anyway, um, real-time air traffic, things like that are going to take effect there. Um, same thing with your live weather, um, photo geometry, or photogrammetry, excuse me. Um, these are all going to um, pull the uh, terrain detail, excuse me, from the satellite imagery. So this is going to be a data impact. But again, I don't know. I have tried turning all of these off at one point, and I don't see any any real change in performance for me. So that again you have a bunch of different factors that come in there a um, couple other things that have come up recently is people unable to find this directory your windows app directory guys i can tell you right now um, one person said that they don't have a flight simulator exe okay this guy right here somewhere you do there's no ands if or buts about it the simulator can't launch without it unless you're using the um xbox pass maybe um, I don't use it. I haven't tried it, but I suppose that could be a cloud launch. But even then, I would think there'd be an executable local to the machine. Um, but I don't know enough about that to specify. But I know this one person said that they got it from the Microsoft Store and they don't have the, ex the EXE. It is absolutely there somewhere. Now, you may not have permissions to access the directory, which if you go through my, and there's a link for it in the description below, go through my Microsoft Flight Simulator um, start to finish video and I walk through in that video how to find the folder and how to um, adjust the permissions so that way you can access it. Um, now this application, this is where I told Microsoft Flight Simulator in the installation to install it. Okay, so I told it to install it here, then it installed, then it went through the update process. So this literally is the first location you pick Okay, if it's default, that's going to be in C, users, program data, um, or app data, excuse me, local, and then you should have the Windows apps folder. Um, but worst case scenario, guys, title it just like this, go to this PC, come up here to search, and type Windows apps, all one word. So we, like you can see I've done here before, Windows apps. Okay, and you would type it and let it run through until you find the folder. Okay, now I'm not going to let it go. It's going to populate a whole bunch of different things here in a minute. But you keep going until you find the directory you're looking for. But it's got to be there. Um, okay. 
Next thing I want to talk to you guys about is thermal throttling. Okay, so thermal throttling can take place when your hardware, GPU or CPU, get too hot and re start reducing their workload forcibly until they can cool back down. When that happens, you can get things like micro stutters, FPS loss, and in severe cases, it can even crash. Okay, I highly recommend you guys look, uh, go to Google and search for NZXT Cam. Um, it is an NZXT product. You do not have to have NZXT hardware installed on your machine for this to work. I don't have any NZXT hardware, um, and uh, it's really handy. Um, it allows you to monitor your CPU load, your CPU temperature, your GPU load and GPU temperature, your RAM usage, um, and then what's currently using the RAM. So anyway, long story short, um, ask yourself when the last time you cleaned your system was, because thermal throttling is a big deal, especially with older hardware. Um, not to say it's any less, I should say it's not less any big deal with newer hardware. It's just, um, doesn't happen quite as often. Um, the lower hardware or lower end hardware or older hardware is going to, um, struggle a bit more than some of the newer stuff. And so may thermal throttle more frequently. Um, the other thing is like, like I said, you know, open your CPU up or, or open your uh, computer up and look at your fans. Uh, make sure you don't have big dust bunnies built up on your fan blades. If you have an AIO, you know, an all-in-one water cooler, uh, make sure the radiator isn't clogged up with dust and things like that. Um, you you got to keep the machine clean, as mine very rudely told me this weekend that I needed to clean it. Um, but uh, these are things that are going to absolutely affect frames per second and absolutely affect performance. Um, someone else had also asked me where to get the documentation. Um for the uh, performance guide that we were looking at in one of the previous videos. And I thought I had it up on the screen there, but that's possibly I didn't. Um, msfsaddons.org here, okay? And you're gonna go into extras and reference. And there's how to create scenery, how to maximize your FPS performance Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So go ahead and just grab that. You just click on the titling. And here's the PDF document that we looked at before. Now you can either just look at it from here or you can, where was it? I can't remember how I did it. There is a full guide huh, for $9.99. I don't remember seeing that before. But anyway, you can go ahead and just click on this guy right here and it will take you to a separate document that can then be downloaded. But I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to go ahead and buy this document um, and we'll walk through it uh, step by step. Actually, no, I won't do that. That's I'm not going to do that. But they spelled recommend wrong, by the way. Um, anyway, um, I will say that I'll, I'm going to buy this document. I'm going to walk through it. And I will let you guys know whether or not you should buy it as well. I'm not going to display it on my YouTube channel. That would just be completely wrong. Um, but uh, I will I will absolutely buy this right now. Um, as soon as this recording is over, I'll go through it and I'll let you guys know what I thought. And let you know if it's uh, valuable enough to, to actually purchase this document. All right, guys. So anyway, I hope you guys found some useful information here. Um, there is actually another one here that you guys may be interested in. Um, I... Did not find any performance gains by doing so, but you can come to manage 3D settings. And someone had reported threaded optimization, turning this off made a huge difference for him. And this may be true with lower end machines um, that don't support hyper threading as well as some of the newer CPUs. Um, so um, again, these are things that you can try, shut it off. Still make sure that you have your high performance settings on power management and texture filtering. Um, but, um, yeah, there's another one there that you may give a shot and see if that doesn't help you, um, smooth things out a bit. So until the next one, guys, I will see you soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, be kind to each other, guys. Be kind to each other now more than anything. Just, just be kind to each other. All right. Um, guys, uh, brown, black, blue, white, Asian, Japanese, doesn't care. I love you all. Um, and, and I mean that it's, it's, it's really hard watching everything that's going on around us right now. So love each other, care for each other. And, and, you know, I'm not normally one to preach things like that, but damn right now we need it. Okay. Um, so, uh, just watch each other's back, take each other's six and, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.